Hey, what's up everyone? This is Sam from Rococo, and today I'm going to be walking you through the Cinema 4D workflow for Motion Library. So I'm gonna be walking you through everything from finding an asset, a motion capture asset on Motion Library, downloading that asset, importing it into Cinema 4D, and then using a character that I've rigged up in Mixamo to uh, connect that motion capture to that character. So let's jump right into it. So Motion Library is Rococo's uh, motion capture marketplace. You, we can find all sorts of mocap, all recorded from AAA studios and uh, amazing motion capture performers. And you can pretty much find whatever you want. So uh, it's super easy to access this as a Cinema 4D user. And, and I'm gonna take you through that. So the, the first thing you're gonna need to do to access the motion library is actually get Rococo Studio. Uh, the motion library uh, is within Rococo Studio right now. Eventually you'll be able to find it just at motionlibrary.com. But for right now, you need Rococo Studio and you can get that for free by going to uh, www.rococo.com. Uh, if you just go to products here, studio, you can download your version uh, and then install it and open it up. So once you've opened up Rococo Studio, you'll be confronted with this little, um, what is this? This is the dashboard screen. Um, Motion Library is located up here in the top left, and if we click this button here, uh, this is kind of the, the front of Motion Library with all the different assets. Today we're going to be downloading and uh, getting into Cinema 4D an asset from Mora Motion, which is a, a publisher that I love, and I was thinking we could grab this uh, Slow Rhythm Dance, Slow Rhythm Dance 03. I really like this one. More Emotion has some awesome dance moves and everything. Um, and the way that we found this is we just went to publishers and then we put in dance under the categories and it, it gives us all the dances. So you can use these, these filters up here to um, organize all the assets and make it a little bit easier to uh, find what you're looking for. You can also search for them using the search bar. So we have found the asset that we want, this one. And if we double click, here we can get an expanded view of it. We can scrub through it and everything. Um, so in order to purchase these asset, this asset, we can see that the price is $3. There's a lot of free assets as well, but we're gonna purchase this uh, just to show you the, the entire workflow of how to get it. Um, we would just go up to add to cart, go to our cart, and we can see that our balance is too low, so we're gonna top up our wallet. So if we click top up balance, And um, if we go into your team here, uh, this is, we're on the basic plan. You're automatically added to the basic plan when you sign up for free. And um, the basic plan allows you to have total access to the motion library. You don't need one of our pro plans, uh, so you can, you can get all those motion capture assets by, by signing up on the basic plan. Um, so we need to top up our balance here. So if we hit top up, uh, we can just add, because it's, three dollars and we already have two in our account here we're just gonna add another dollar if I hit can I've already entered my payment information and everything um, so I'm gonna hit confirm and top up and we have other tutorials walking you through this entire process that we just released so if you want to walk through of all the different plans and everything feel free to check out those tutorials and, and get more information or just reach out to us at support at rococo.com so you saw there it, it successfully added um, another dollar, so now we have three in our account. If we go back to Rococo Studio, we might have to log out and log back in whenever we top up the balance for now. But if we do that, Now we have $3 in our balance. So now we can go ahead and purchase this asset. So let's hit confirm the order, check out. And purchase successful. So now if we go to my team's library, we have all of the assets that we've purchased or that we've downloaded. Um, this asset also costs $3, but there's lots of free assets on, on here that you can find to build pretty much any scene that you would need. Um, 
So here's our asset, boom. So the question now is how do we get this? Uh, we've bought this asset, how do we get it into Cinema 4D? Uh, and it's, it's super easy, so let's pause this guy. Ooh, yeah, cool. Um, if we come up here to this import, and we hit this drop down, um, this allows you to basically download this asset. Uh, you have to select a project that you've created. So I just have this project that I've created called Motion Library Assets. You can create a project in the dashboard, just here, new, new project, and here's my Motion Library Assets. So we click that, and boom, it is downloaded. So we can either go back to that dashboard, or as you saw that open import folder, if we click that right here, it just brings us directly to this import folder. And this, this folder is in the Rococo uh, folder, so, so it's in your documents on a PC. Um, and you can always find it just through this, you know, through, through that process that we just went through there. You can also find the assets, if you go into the project, you can see here, here are the assets that I've downloaded from the Motion Library. Here's our slow rhythm dance. If we right click this, open folder, that'll find the folder that it's in as well. Okay, so we have this FBX and we wanna bring it into Cinema 4D. So let's open up Cinema 4D. Now I'm working on R21. Uh, this is the same process, uh, you know, as far back as I can remember in Cinema 4D. So, so it shouldn't really matter what version you're on. Um, Okay, here we are. So, if we go to File, Merge Objects, and then we go to that Documents, Rococo Studio, Motion Library Assets, Motion Library, here we go, here is our FBX. So we just double click it, and that was File, Merge again, and there we go. That is our FBX in Cinema 4D, ready to go. And scrub through it to make sure. Cool. And one of the things that's so great about Motion Library is this this dance is so expressive and unique. It's it's like clearly done by a very good dancer, um, which can be difficult in motion capture because sometimes you know it's not being recorded by by a great dancer. So that's the advantage of Motion Library is that you can find these assets that have been really well thought out, that are really unique, um, you know, are different from the normal Mixamo fare that kind of everyone is using out there. So I encourage you to go check out everything that's on there. Um, okay, now that we have it in, there's a couple different ways to get it connected to a character. The first way um, is, is kind of the dirty way, uh, but it's also the quick way. So if we have a character in a T-pose, and um, right now if we select this figure here, make it editable. Uh, then we're gonna select children and we're going to connect objects and delete just to get one solid mesh. Um, if we wanted to connect this to this mocap, the easiest way to do it would be to um, just click on the mocap we have here, right click select children, which, will, which is gonna select all the joints in this chain. Then we select the geometry, go up to character, click bind, boom. There we go. So that's the easy way to do it. Um, it's not particularly clean. You know, this character wasn't rigged, so, you know, it really depends on how you initially position that character. You can see here that, you know, this is like bending a little bit weird maybe. Um, so you can take more time and line it up, uh, you know, closer, but in the vast majority of cases, you're going to actually want to, you know, retarget this animation onto a character that's already been rigged properly. You know, so all the rig, you know, all the, the joints have been properly weight painted, so they're pulling the geometry in the correct way. This character was just a mesh that we had that we just connected. So that's one way to do it. That's the easy way to do it. Now let's go through how to get a character that you've rigged on Mixamo um, connected to this mocap data. And this is a little bit more intensive, but once you've done it once, it's, it's very simple. So let's delete this figure. Here we are again. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and save this, which you should always do. Dancing motion library. Okay. So I have a character here 
um, that's just kind of a basic mesh uh, that I have. This, this is unrigged. Let's take a look at it. It's just, just a character, um, you know, just a mesh. There's no rigging. So I'm gonna use Mixamo to rig this and then we're gonna connect that up. So delete this, hit V, and go back to the project that I was in. Let's go to Mixamo and um, we're going to upload a character. Go back to our characters here, drag this guy in. Now I'm just gonna go through the basic process of rigging this on Mixamo. I'll fast forward a little bit. Okay, there we go. So if we hit next, we have our character here. So the version that we're gonna wanna download, not the best rigging job, but, uh, but definitely serviceable. We're gonna to wanna to download a T-Pose. So if you go to animations, this guy's in a T-Pose, but you know, sometimes it won't be. T-Pose, there we go. And hit download. So now if we go back to Cinema 4D and we import that download, this is my downloads today, T-Pose. There we go, now we have the uh, Mixamo rigged character. And so this doesn't have to be a character that's been rigged with Mixamo. If you have a character that's already been rigged, that's an asset that you purchased, uh, you know, from Turbo Squid or something, um, you know, you can do, do this exact same process on any uh, rig. It's just that, um, you know, many Cinema 4D users, I feel like use Cin uh, Mixamo, so I just thought that this would be the, the most appropriate kind of character to, to, to use. So, okay, how do we now transfer this motion accurately onto this character? And unfortunately, the only way to do it within Cinema 4D is by using the constraint tabs, uh, tags. So you basically have to go in, and, and this is the Mixamo, you know, uh, rig here. And we have to go in and we have to add constraint tags to every one of these joints, excluding the fingers, um, and connect them with the reference um, animation. So I'll go through that process right now. It's a little time consuming. If there is a better process out there, we would love to know it. People have told me there's interesting things you can do with the you know, animation, um, uh, motion clip system, and also, um, in, you know, by, by using the retarget tag. Unfortunately, those things don't tend to work because the skeletons really need to be exactly the same, which often, you know, even in terms of the length, the specific length of the joints. And oftentimes that just is not gonna be the case. Um, so this is really the only way to do this accurately that I know of right now. And um, the, the honest truth is that if you have Maya, Maya is just much better at doing this retargeting. They have a system that makes it really easy to kind of select bones and save presets, and, and it, it's a lot easier than Cinema 4D, unfortunately. You know, Maya, you can get lots of trials, so you could, you know, if you're, you don't want to do this way, you could, you could use Maya. This isn't that bad, but it is a little time consuming, so, and you'll see what I mean in a moment. Um, the nice thing is, after you've done this once, you can use the retarget tag then, to uh, you know, add in new animations uh, to your already kind of rigged up system. So, so let's go through this and you'll see what I mean. So again, what we need to be doing is adding constraint tags to this skeleton, the character skeleton, that are referencing the movements from our, our, our actual mocap data. So what I normally do is I expand out, I start with the spine and the neck, and then I do the right and uh, left leg, or right and left uh, arms, and then I do the, the legs last. So this process works by basically I'll right click on say the top, um, first of all, first thing I'll do is I'll go and I'll go into right click on something in here, say the top mesh here, go up to rigging tags, select constraint tag. After I've selected constraint tag, I go to PSR, position, uh, scale rotation, or size rotation, not sure. Click the PSR tab, hit maintain original. 
And this is gonna be our kind of template tag that we're gonna copy to all the other ones. So I leave this on the mesh and then eventually I delete this one uh, last and you'll see what I mean. So instead of going, you know, right clicking, going to rigging, you know, going to constraint, clicking PSR every time, this one is ready to go. And if I just hold control and drag it down, it'll just make a copy. Then at that point, all I need to do is click the target and click the appropriate uh, corresponding animation or, or joint on, on our reference. So that was the hips. Keep going. If I kind of hold down control, you know, keep my finger on control, I can do this pretty quickly. Spine, spine one. Spine two, neck, head. And as you can see, it's a little time consuming, but it's honestly not that bad. Um, if you want to stay in Cinema 4D or need to stay in Cinema 4D. So, so this is the, the process of doing this. So I'm gonna fast forward, but, um, but this, is, this is how it's done. So let's, let's get through the rest of these. Okay, there we go. And so I've gone through and I've, I've done all the joints. It honestly took less than two minutes for me to do that. I've done it a bunch, but you know, it, it's a little annoying, but it's not impossible. And it, it's just a little, you know, it's a little bit of extra work. So it's really not that bad to do in here. And I, and I recommend doing this method as opposed to that bind method that we showed before, just because this character has been rigged properly. So that bind method, you're not doing the, the right weight painting when you do that. You really want to connect to the joint system that comes with your character. So if we hit play and everything has been done right, there we go. You'll see the character is now, uh, you know, copying all the motions of, of this rig and it looks really great. Sometimes you will need to go in and uh, I found on the, on the, especially the foot and the toe base, and then as well on the like forearm and left hand, you know, the forearm and hand on, on both arms, you might need to go in and uncheck, uncheck position. Um, if, if you're seeing stuff, if you're seeing something weird with those appendages, I would try that. Other than that, this one seems to be working fine, so I'm not gonna do that. And there we go, that is the entire workflow. So now I'm going to add some hair to this guy and just do a kind of a cool little render. Here it is, the final result, an animation that we've taken from Motion Library, downloaded, imported into Cinema 4D, and then connected up to a character that we had and that we rigged with Mixamo. Um, I hope this was very helpful. Unfortunately, the workflow is a little bit messy with Cinema 4D. It just really isn't built for this retargeting. Um, but that being said, it doesn't take that much time. And uh, you can then use the retarget tag to add in new animations uh, from, you know, from the same skeleton that you've got from Motion Library. So if I were to download, you know, another dance from Motion Library, from Moro Motion, you know, say this one, because it used the same skeleton as the input dance that we just uh, added, we would just have to use the retarget tag and we could we could add in this new dance. Um, so, so that makes it a little bit easier. We hope you guys found this helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. But other than that, stay tuned for more cool motion library updates and general updates. We got a lot of stuff coming this year. Thanks so much guys, and we'll see you on the next one.